What moments made you laugh the most? Hmm. Low horses couldn't drag me away. Slow horses is unhappy MI fives. Slow horses is a great British show that I had no idea even existed until a couple days ago. Interesting. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, the podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. But you still can. Yay. Mm -hmm. If you'd like us to review a show, in the comments below, make your suggestion. Just type uh, WTF, stands for Watch the First, and the show, and where we can stream it. In this case, you would have said WTF, Slow Horses on Apple TV+. Plus. And today, we are doing that review of Slow Horses on Apple TV+. Plus. First episode entitled, Failures Contagious. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, please like this video. Subscribe to the channel. If you're listening in, give us a five-star rating and a nice review. We'd really appreciate it. Look, everybody, it's Screen Rant's own John Orchiola. Hey, John. Hello. Thanks for having me, guys. So great having you. Uh, John Orchiola writes for Screen Rant. He covers Star Trek, AEW wrestling, and golf. Sometimes golf. <laughs> Mainly uh, golf. More about that in a moment, everybody. Dr. Muhammad Noor, as you know, co-host champ is here. Hello, it's a pleasure to be on Falling Towers. Watch the first of things. I'm here too, if you can believe that. My name is Ryan Yay. T. Husk. All right, let's get into this. Let's talk about slow horses. Could it feels like we should say it slowly too. Slow, slow. horse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm so lost already, Dr. Nor. Where, where do we go? Oh, so that means we're in a predicament, meaning this is where we predict what each of us thought of the show without giving away whether we liked it by like using adjectives like great. <laughs> Just teasing you, John. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite part of the show, everybody. I really love this kind of stuff. I don't know why. I hope everybody thinks it's as fun as I do. But we like to predict what each other thought. Muhammad and I have known each other for a few years. We know each other pretty well. We can kind of knock this out usually john orchiola and i have known each other fairly well the last year or two i'd say muhammad and john similar maybe a little less let's get into this um muhammad i predict that you liked this show as the british would say a fair bit i think they do that maybe americans do i don't know you like this show a fair bit, like jolly good, jolly good, <laughs> tut tut, uh, like maybe a little higher than a fair bit, like a like around the eight, like you know, I think you're an eight on this mm -hmm. scale of one to ten. Is I think oh, that's where you're you just are. describing me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah. I think you're pretty high on it, John. This is going to be really tough, but I predict that you think this is great. Um, <laughs> I think you're going to give it like an 8.5 ish to nine. Hmm. I think that you're going to like it. It feels like it's a smart show. And I think you're one of those guys that likes the smart shows. You don't necessarily just want the ha ha pie in your face, although those are fine. I think you want the thinking man's shows. Those are my predictions. What do you think, Dr. Noor? Right, I think you liked it, but I don't think you were over the moon for it. You're, you're not big on drama series in general. <laughs> so, I mean, like you'll watch them and you actually will thoroughly enjoy some. Like, I remember you really liked Succession, just as an example. But in general, like, well, you don't Succession gravitate. Succession is outstanding. You bet everybody yeah. better like it. Yeah, but you don't usually gravitate to drama series. So, I, I'm thinking, like, you're like, good, but not. I don't think, it, I don't think you're like, wow, I, I'm dying to keep watching more of this. I think you're more like, good. John, even separate from the comment you made at the very beginning, I actually would have guessed that this is a show that you would like. I think this is one you're going to appreciate. I think you appreciate the style. I think you appreciate the pace. I think you appreciate most of, of what's in it. So uh, like Ryan, I think you're going to give it something in the 8.5 or possibly even higher range. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. What do you predict, John? Well, I would say for Ryan, I would probably think he would lean towards maybe a six or a six point five. I think. Um, I think the uh, the Britishness of it might might be a little challenging. Um, and Mohammed, I also think uh, you would like it maybe a slightly more. Um, and I think you might be curious to see what what continues of, from the show. Um, mm-hmm. So I think you'd rank it a little bit higher, maybe a seven point five or even an eight. An eight. Okay. Whoa. All right, everybody, make your predictions. You got some hints. They may have been helpful hints. They may not have been. Uh, do you think I liked slow horses? Do you think Dr. Nor liked slow horses? Do you think John Orkiola of Screen Rant liked slow horses? Make your predictions now. Type them away in the live chat or in the comments below. No rush. Take your time. Really assess this. See how close you can get. While you're typing, Dr. Nor is going to buy us some time by telling us what this show is even a boot. You type it at the pace of a slow horse. <laughs> <laughs> so River Cartwright is tracking a potential bomber for an MI5 exercise, but things go awry, and the bomber sets off an explosion that would have killed hundreds. His grandfather, an MI5 big shot, intervenes to keep him from getting fired. So River is assigned to Slow House, basically purgatory for MI5 agents when they pursue seemingly useless, seemingly useless endeavors. Things possibly change when one Slow House agent, Sid, gets possibly interesting intel from a suspect. River takes Sid's intel to his old snazzy office and is treated like rubbish but he's intent on proving himself. Things get even more interesting when it seems like a right-wing nationalist group kidnaps someone and threaten to execute him. River is intent on doing something and not sitting this one out. Whoa. Mohammed, I'm glad you explained what the show is about because all of our dialogue leading up to that made it seem like this is actually a show about horses, like Mr. Ed, (laughs) like a talking horse. It's true. It does sound like that. All right. I don't know what Mr. Ed is, but um, I'm just I'm just kidding. I've heard of it. <laughs> I know horse, he horse, talks horse, like horse. this or something There's like no that. But I've like never seen it. Wilbur. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's up next, Dr. Nor? Where do we go? This is my favorite part of the show. The previous one was your favorite part. You like the expect catch. I'm sorry, the um, predicaments. But I like the expect Sketchins, where we spend a little bit of time on what we expected before watching the show, still not giving away what we thought about, it. and a lot more time on what we actually get in, what we actually think as we watch this show. Or as Ryan says much more eloquently than that, than what I just did, we like to compare and contrast what we expected before watching the show with what we actually got after we watched it. Mm-hmm. All right. So maybe we should do that now. Maybe we should. Dr. Norm, before you watched this first episode of Slow Horses. Oh, I wonder if that's like Slow House. Yeah, that's right. It was my assumption. Yeah. God, I'm Spelled slow. different. Took me forever to get that. <laughs> I just only got it right now. <laughs> uh, before you watch this first episode of Slow House, what did you expect, if anything? I actually, I, I knew that a show with this name existed because it's one of those ones when I go into Apple TV, like there'd be that picture there. And I saw there's a woman who played Allison in, in House of Dragon was one of the people in there. So I was like, oh, there's a show that seems to be popular because it keeps showing up in my feed. Plot wise, I didn't know anything. There's somebody in my research lab who apparently really likes it. I mentioned uh, on on the Friday before this recording, I mentioned uh, to my lab, uh, they said, what are you watching? What are you doing for? Um, uh, or, um, watch the first this week, and I said, oh, We're gonna record on slow, uh, slow horses. They're like, Oh, Sarah loves that show, she's always trying to get us to watch it, but they didn't even know what it was about either. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. came in pretty, pretty dark. I didn't know what the plot was. I think I, I think I did see it was in the drama category, but I, the plot, mm, nothing. <laughs> Do British people say drama or drama? I assume drama, but I don't know. Okay, um. <laughs> What about you, John? What did you expect before watching this first episode, if anything? Well, um, I also was kind of aware of Slow Horses just by seeing it on my Apple TV Plus menu. Um, I think the main time I found out that the show really existed and that it had three seasons was I saw a tweet from Terry Metalis raving about the show uh, a little while ago. Um, 
And I was like, oh, I should probably watch that if he thinks it's great. Um, I knew it was British. Um, Gary Oldman was a dead giveaway. So it was Olivia Cook who plays Allison on House of the Dragons. Um, and I knew it was kind of a spy show. Um, and I felt like I'd seen shows kind of similar to it, like Bodyguard on Netflix with um, with Richard Madden and and shows like that. But, um, yeah, I wasn't sure what to expect um, besides a very kind of British set in London MI5 show. Mm hmm. Good description. You know, I was thinking maybe Irish people say drama. Or, or Scots. <laughs> Oh, you like the drama? I can't do those accents, but I feel like <laughs> Scotch probably say like drama, and Irish people probably say drama. I don't know. Somebody let us know. This is important. <laughs> um, this is the most important. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> All right. So back to this drama. Um, what did I expect? I didn't expect anything. Don't know anything about this show. Um, I feel as though, you know, it's, it's been recommended a few times and when something's recommended, it's because people like something or because it's popular, because it's good. Um, a lot of, I, if I were you guys, I would recommend terrible things to watch a squirm for an hour. Just to be like, oh, great. Now I can watch them just have to stomach and battle through this terrible show that I know is really weird and creepy. <laughs> um, <laughs> But no, I so I expected it to be good. And I didn't know anything else about it. I didn't even really know what genre it was in. I don't think I didn't know any of the actors that were going to be in it. Clean slate. I knew it was going to be an hour. So I was like, all right, you better be good, bro. Taking an hour of my good life. Do you remember who so, recommended it? I mean, you said a few people did. Do you remember any of them? Just curious. I, I do not. Let me okay. check. Um, no. I thought maybe it wasn't a few, but it, maybe it was two. Okay, but I've, I've heard it, but it was definitely in there uh, over the course of a couple years, too. So, so for everybody that suggested it, this is for you. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> suggesting it. Sorry. We just picked somebody randomly. Good job, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, for, Muhammad forgot who it was. I did forget. <laughs> However, that's what we expected, everybody. Pencils down. All your predictions must be in because it's time to talk about what we actually got, Dr. Noor. Uh, actually, I loved it. I thought <laughs> I enjoyed it a great deal. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I just wanted to yank y'all's chair. No, I, 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 I very much enjoyed it. I mean, it's not like my favorite show, but I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was an excellent start. That starting sequence there with like running around the airport was fascinating i mean I, I was like captivated like what's happening where, where, where are they going is this guy gonna make it you know what's gonna happen and the fact that then he didn't successfully stop the bomber though i didn't at the time i thought it was an actual bomber so that that was also an interesting twist later like oh that was an exercise so everybody's fine okay that was a little odd but it made me more in intrigued by the fact it was odd the concept of the show is interesting this sort of like focus on bottom level mi5 as opposed to the james bond type of things that you typically see in most of these shows like these are the people who are like go oh, go through that trash dig through and see if there's anything interesting <laughs> maybe there won't be whatever that was fine um generally speaking the the pacing was good i thought the acting the, at least i mean i'm not an expert you guys are more expert on that area i thought it was very good i i Never, I never looked at the time, even though it was an hour show. I never looked at the time the whole time. I was, I was very much engaged. I'd sometimes even like lose track of writing stuff down because I was so drawn into the show. Wow. Yeah. I hated Jackson Lamb. <laughs> I hated him. I think you're supposed to hate him, but like enough that it actually was a little bit of a turnoff. Like that would be a little bit of a barrier to me to continuing to watch the show. It's like I hated that character. <laughs> um, I found it mildly stressful, but to some extent, good drama should do that. Good drama should leave you. Not just like, oh, that was pleasant. Like, that's not drama. <laughs> that should leave you kind of stressed out. So, yeah, I mean, overall, I came away positive. Mm. Quite positive, actually. Yeah, my screenwriting so teacher used to always say, nobody wants to watch The Village of Happy People. Right? You got to have mm. drama. You got to have conflict. Yeah. Uh, well, John Orchiola, what did you actually get upon viewing this episode? Well, I thought also it was a very good start. Um, I was a little surprised that I didn't 
quite hook into the characters like I thought I would, but I feel like that would come in time. Um, I thought probably the character I liked the most was Olivia Cook's character, Sid, uh, yeah. just because she was the most competent and I like confidence. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I agree with, I agree with Muhammad that um, Jackson Lamb was really off putting. Um, and I'm sure over time he'll become endearing, I guess, in, in his slovenly way. But, um, <laughs> but upon introduction, you're like, Oh man, I really hate this guy, but again, I think we're supposed to. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, absolutely. Uh, very, very, Gross, a, a gross character. Uh, um, I, I also hated um, uh, the Spider, Spider, Spider Web, um, uh, River Cartwright's friend who kind of, yeah. kind of screwed him over there. Um, yeah. And I was also, I was also surprised that that whole opening sequence in the airport was a training exercise, and it kind of threw me off because um, Gary Oldman men- mentioned like how many people died. When, when when the bomb went off. So I was like, oh, did that actually happen? Wait, no, it was a training exercise, but they're I guess they're tracking it as if it, it did happen. So I was a little I was a little confused by by that. Um but overall, yeah, I thought it was a good start. Um I, I want to see where it goes. It reminded me a little bit of Killing Eve season one, a show I really, really mm-hmm. loved, which also kind of was set about MI5 and um was also kind of like a, a weird kind of offshoot little office of MI5 tracking the world's greatest serial killer who was Villanelle, jo- played by Jody Comer. Mm-hmm. Um so it kind of reminded me of that in a good way. Um but yes, I would love to see how the show goes. I'm sure I will love it even more as as time goes on. But I, 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 it was a bit of a softer, softer like. Um, I can see what the potential was. The first mm-hmm. episode was good, but not great for me. Potential. All right, everybody. I'll tell you all what I actually got. Well, about 30 seconds in, I was like, oh, man, this is British. Like, it wasn't just, it's not just a British character. Second person has a British accent. Third person, I'm like, oh, man. And it doesn't say, like, England, 1942, to be like, okay, it's not a British show because they're telling you. It's just like, nope, this is what it is. It's British. So I was like, oh, bugger. (laughs) So anyway, that's not so bad, you know, whatever. Um, (laughs) They're allowed to have shows. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> so i mean yeah i'm not a big drama guy i guess and i feel like this show is better than how much i enjoyed it uh i think that this dude uh jackson lamb <laughs> was unbelievable very, I mean, like in a, in the best possible way. I thought the acting Gary Oldman Oldman was. I put in my notes extremely convincing. It does not <laughs> seem like he's acting at all. He is just he is that being that person. We all completely believe that that's who he is. Incredible acting. I also thought that the the. The older lady kind of looked like Hillary Clinton. Um, the, secret- the secretary. Catherine. No, not quite. Not Graham Graham. Um, oh. She was in charge. She was kind of running the simulation. Christian Scott at- Thomas. Uh, the head of MI5. Yes, I guess so. Um, yeah. What's her first name? Christian Scott Thomas. She's been around forever. She's she's great. Um. Okay. Well, anyway. Yeah, so she was phenomenal too. Her acting was very good, very natural, especially because it's hard to do that when you're not doing anything too extreme. She's just standing there looking at a screen and giving orders and stuff like that. But she was there. She was very there and very it was it was very good. So I thought those two were the were major standouts for me. The show overall um objectively it is good. It's a good show. It's a it's a very good show, and I could see that it, it it feels like a show that once you get into it, once you get a few episodes in, it gets better and better, and you start pulling these threads, and all these okay. mysteries start to unravel, and Cartwright starts to kind of move up and become in the middle of this thing, and he has his redemption story, and oh boy, this is, life is amazing and weird at the same time. But that's what I actually got. 
Um, let's just get up into see, this. What? Are you happy to see Jonathan Bryce? I don't know who that is. Uh, the guy who played the Bryce. High Sparrow. <laughs> yeah, he was the grandfather of, oh. uh, of River. That's why he, he like, was familiar. Wow. Or Prince Philip yeah. from the last season of The Crown, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he was the Prince Philip. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. He was yeah. charming. I did like him. I wish I remembered that. It's a great cast. It's, these are amazing actors um, mm-hmm. and, uh, on the show. And there's some actually listed that we, we don't even see until later seasons who are mm-hmm. also really great. Diana. Diana is the name of the head of the MI5 thing. Yes. Um, let's get into this, though. You guys, I found it very hard to believe that that opening scene was a simulation. I'm like, you guys paid thousands of actors rented out an airport <laughs> to t- give this one guy one test like this is that's not i do not believe that for a second go ahead mohammed well i was gonna say was it wasn't necessarily for the one guy i mean it may have been like for a large group of people and he just happened to be like on point i just feel like that many actors and that i mean that's like still yeah you're right your point's still well taken like i just i, I didn't think they were after I didn't think they were actors. I thought they were just running a simulation in a real airport, and and you know with 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 some stage people inside. But I I I it didn't occur to me that that entire thing was fake. I thought they were just running a running a simulation in a real world situ in a real world setting to test um, uh, River Cartwright, and you know mm. and keep. And that certainly it. would be cheaper, except for the uh, the lawsuits that they would incur from <laughs> well, tackling sure. people and maybe shooting somebody by accident well, he and an airplane that, though, taken but... off late. He tackled one guy. <laughs> yeah, we saw the, the bashing video through old later ladies going down. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know, but that's makes a little bit more sense if that's the case. Yeah, there's some witty uh, lines in there too. Like, what are you looking for? The remnants of a once promising career. <laughs> you know, some of those comments. There were some witty <laughs> commentaries in there. Or, or like painful ones. Like, I don't like you and I want you to quit. Like, well, yeah, that's, you know, can't beat around the bush there. That's yeah. very direct. <laughs> but <laughs> what did your last servant die of? And what, what did your last boss die of? You know, there was a lot. There was some pretty witty repartees in there. <laughs> yeah. And, and back to what, uh, Muhammad, you mentioned earlier. And I'd love to hear your takes on these. Uh, but that opening 10 to 12 minute sequence, the way I know that it was really good was, you know, then it ends and we go to whatever present day. And I was like, whoa, 12 minutes went by. I could not. I was like, wow, I thought it had only been like five. But the fact that 12 minutes had gone by and I already knocked out a chunk of this episode that fast, I was <laughs> pretty pleased with that. It must have been really good if if that much time flew by, you know. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the opening sequence, John? I thought the opening sequence was really, really great. Um, and it makes more sense now, like thinking about it, now that we've talked about whether or not it was how much of a simulation it was. Um, but it was very well done. Very, I thought the execution of it, the staging of it, the acting within it, um, very Bondish, very, very well modern James Bond style done on, on a TV budget, really well, well executed. Um, and in hindsight, you know, River was not supposed to do all that stuff. He wasn't supposed to uh, tackle people. He wasn't supposed to cause that scene. Um, so I think, like, the way it was supposed to go, it was supposed to be a really quiet apprehension of the guy with the backpack with the bomb. And it just completely went AWOL, um, which I thought made it really fun and um, and kind of unpredictable. Um, so... Uh, as as an opening sequence, it's a, it was an excellent hook. I thought. Well said. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was cool. It was interesting. Um, all those people died, but then they really didn't. Um, mm-hmm. Hobden says, "Great country, two thousand years ago." That was funny. There are some funny lines. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Spies that haven't shut the bed. He says, you don't get to ask questions. That's for spies who haven't shut the bed. This dude got, <laughs> when this guy showed up, all of a sudden I was like, whoa, <laughs> this show just got way more entertaining because he just gets a lot of lines and a lot of great lines and he delivers them very well. I feel like they 
feel like the writers have a field day with that character. And he's probably their favorite character to write for. Um, but you guys didn't you guys didn't like him, eh? You mm-hmm. guys were like, ah, this guy. I like the lines I didn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the performance was excellent. So yeah. excellent that I put myself in River Shoes and it's like, if this guy's my boss, I will kill myself. Mm-hmm. Uh <laughs> Mm-hmm. That that was the reaction. That's why he was so. That's how good he was. That you know, and he was supposed to be repulsive, and he, he just one hundred percent conveyed it. Yeah, I put myself in his shoes, in the boss's <laughs> shoes. Uh, whatever is Jackson Lamb. I was like, I want to be him when I. I don't know. Is that called growing up? I don't know. You can be him now. <laughs> I don't understand how that that what do they call it? The flash box. I don't understand how that works. Yeah, me neither. I was a little confused, like what? What's happening there? What is that? <laughs> well, so it's a case. It was a case to put uh, sensitive yeah. stuff in, and you have to have a certain code or something to open it, or else it explodes, like Mission Impossible. Yeah, but it doesn't like explode, um, explode. It just like hurts you. <laughs> and um, Ryan, on the subject of you becoming Ronald Jackson Lamb, well, I think you can just start <laughs> cutting holes in your socks. And um, I don't need to cut them. I already have holes in my socks. It's fun. It's it's fun because then when you're walking, you're like, oh, I feel that one. That's weird. You know. So favorite character wise, Jackson Lamb for you, Ryan, and and Sid for you, John. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I just I really love Olivia Cook. So yeah. I'm just a big fan. She's very good. I what about Sid you, Doctor Nor? Who's your favorite? I pick Sid too. I really like Sid as well. I mean, I thought her character yeah. was well developed, and she's an excellent actress too. Yeah. You know, I think she only stays. She's only in this one season. I think because she le because she leaves to go shoot House of the Dragon. Um, So I think I think she is only in this one in season one. Okay. Wonder what happens to her character. So, um, wow, that is interesting. There was a really good moment with her, um, what very well written, I thought, which was. When she sees Cartwright's burnt hand and she she kind of holds it and they have this nice moment. She goes, Did that hurt? And he goes, Yeah, I'm hurty. And she went, boom, and hits it. Yeah. I'm like, that's great. They're setting up a nice, you know, kind of sibling probably, rivalry. Yeah, and potential romance too, because Maybe. there's that soft yeah. moment, and he the way he reacts to it means he kind of might like her. There might be something there. And the fact that she knows he'll react that way means that she's aware that there's maybe something there too. So they're setting mm. something up, whether it pans out or not, they're definitely setting something up there where something could develop eventually. Extracurricular oh. activities, as Jackson Lamb referred to it. As. Mm-hmm. And I think there's probably going to have more moments there where he kind of maybe leans in for something or they have like a, a softer moment or something. She just kind of shoots him down. You know, I feel like that's going to be maybe something that happens more than once in this show. Very possibly. That is true. That is more standard rom-com than sibling thing. You're right. Yeah. Let's see. Who's this guy? Did we meet him or her? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I don't you don't know. see that really like that. I'm thinking sorry. about it now, the scene I really, really liked was when uh, River Cartwright has to go back to MI5, and just you know, we've. All, I think many of us have experienced like getting leaving a job or getting fired from a job and not wanting to go back to that place, but then having to come back for some reason, maybe, and like just how uncomfortable it is to go back to your old workplace and everybody and 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 everybody staring at you and and just ha- mm-hmm. him having to go and meet the guy who's really it was his fault that he was fired Mm -hmm. just the entire sequence of how real world uncomfortable and 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 unpleasant that was i thought was executed really well on on every level yeah and his defensiveness of it too like like i i I work for mi5 just like you you know (laughs) when he was trying to get the badge and then they make him a visitor visitor badge or whatever yeah although i will requires escort i will point out a couple nitpicks um on my part with the writing most of the writing especially the dialogue the dialogue is very very good Uh, a couple nitpicks though was when uh let me think he so he the simulation happens and you know these people die or whatever i feel like fake people i feel like the writers don't trust the audience to be able to handle that humans make mistakes 
I think it would have been okay if it was actually Cartwright's mistake. And that, that and then he has his fall from grace and he has to re-earn their trust. I don't think we need, you know, the hand holding of like, oh, it's okay, audience. You can still like him. He's still good because it was the other guy's fault. I'm like, I think it's okay. People make mistakes. We're not going to hate the character or think the character sucks just because he screwed up on his final exam or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that makes him a better character. They don't, we don't need the, the, like, it feels kind of like the hand holding of saying, well, he's not really disgraced. It's not his fault. It's this other guy. I mean, it makes for a better character for the other character, right? Uh, Webb, it makes him a better character. So that's why I could see its usefulness, but I didn't think that. And I also don't think that we necessarily need the, well, it's okay. It was just a simulation. People didn't really die. I'm like, we don't need that cop out either. It's okay. Mm. If some, sometimes people fuck up and sometimes people die because of that, that's the nature of the business. I feel like it would have really raised the stakes where we go, wow, this guy's living with crazy guilt. And wow, mm -hmm. these people are living a very high stakes life. But then all these cop outs of like, oh, it wasn't really his fault. Oh, people didn't really die. Oh, it wasn't really real. I'm like, well, you don't need to do that. We can handle it. We already know it's not real. It's TV. What do you guys I think? Totally, Is that a totally, totally agree with you on both on both fronts. Um, on the subject of whether or not it's okay that River made a mistake, I think the only way that works that he was set up is to creates the question of why Webb did that to him, and you know, and how that impacts the, the rest of the season. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be it would have been way more interesting if it was just a guy who who had all the potential in the world, was part of a legacy, and you know was in his dream job, and he completely blew it. I thought I thought that would have been a really cool that's um, um, situation to to kind of see him kind of redeem himself out of, kind of like Michael Burnham in Discovery. You know that that kind of that, that same, same idea. Uh, somebody who was on the fast track, who had all the potential in the world, but made a terrible, terrible mistake. But there was no cop out for her. She went to prison, mm -hmm. and so um, um, yeah. And to your second point as well, I, I I agree with I agree with the whole simulation thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first one I found just confusing. So I agree with that one. On the, <laughs> on the first one, I didn't feel it was a cop out for the audience. I thought it was just going to be a plot point for later. Like this was done intentionally mm -hmm. to build up some animosity between these two things as part of a plot. But I could be wrong. I mean, I haven't I haven't watched past the first episode, so I, I don't right. know. It definitely does. I agree. It it makes a better situation between the two of them, uh, between him. And Webb, I mean, it could just be as simple as Webb made a mistake. Webb made a mistake, and this guy's taken the fall for it. And Webb, you know, has this underlying guilt, but that guilt is not as strong as his need to not get pooped on or, you know, for, for having screwed up. He's, I mean, we've all lived in a situation like that where a coworker makes a mistake and we take the fall for it. Oh, yeah. And we're like, mm -hmm. Should I say something or will it make me look worse and petty if I go, no, it wasn't me. It was this guy that really, you know, in a professional environment, a lot of times you think you're absolving yourself of guilt, uh, but really you're making yourself look like you're a finger pointer guy or, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and so it's like this rough situation. John, can you tell us a situation you have like that at your current job? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll turn the cameras off yeah. no but we've all been there right yeah all right um so we've had our favorite characters what moments made you laugh the most hmm. i didn't actually write down any ha ha specifically i mean i remember yeah, that either. I remember the comment there about their own so once promising career. That one I didn't laugh at. I wrote oof <laughs> after it. <laughs> then, uh, what was the actually, joke about what was the joke about the country that was great two thousand years ago? That was Greece. Funny. Oh yeah. Okay. Which country was it? Greece. Oh. Greece. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. I had a few. Let me see, check in my notes. Yeah, Check's right, notes. Uh -huh. uh, great moment or great country two thousand years ago. Yes. Um I laughed, but not intentionally, when the lady stole the information on his flash drive by spilling his coffee. 
I was like, doesn't don't you have to push buttons for your computer to take the information from a flash drive? She just like plugged it in and walked away. I'm like, no, you also have to like click and drag and put, you know, have to do something. And then, you know, she downloaded it really quick. She pulled it out. I don't know. I just kind of laughed. I was like, I, don't, I feel like there's more to it when you're trying to anyway. Well, I think she has a special MI5 laptop that does things automatically. When the That's plot a requires- very good point. That is a actually I I I'm okay. I agree. I'm okay with that. Uh, when uh, Gary Oldman says, uh, "Lamb Jackson Lamb says, you don't get to ask questions. That's for spies who haven't shat the bed. That's funny." And he when he says, um, "There's who's this we? There is no we. There's me telling you what to do." And I was like in love right there. I was like, "Oh my god, I want to be him." And then oh, he says, gosh. if I didn't hate the sight of you, I'd come to your house on the weekends and do it then too, you know, telling him what to do or making fun mm-hmm. of him. Yeah, there are a lot of moments that cracked me up. When when mm-hmm. I was calling her Hillary because she looks like Hillary, but her name is Diana. She's When she says, I'm not going to send some of my grown-up spies, send one of your donkeys. It's just the way they talk about these people is very real and very believable, you know. When she's just like my grown-up spies, you send your donkeys. You know these are these are great lines, very well delivered. Painful um, though, too. Oh well, the show the show is written by Will Smith, but not that Will Smith. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the Will Smith, this Will Smith created Veep, um, oh. so, which is a very very funny show. Okay, that's also one that's that's a lot of meanness too. <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah. WTF or <laughs> Veep, like everybody. WTF, <laughs> Ryan's like, I want to do this. Veep, uh, if you'd like us to review that Ju- show. Julia Louis Dreyfus. Uh, mm-hmm. Carl Unger, when they said, I called him throw up tie because he said, what did you throw up on your tie or something? But when he hands him the, the laptop with the envelope around it, right? The guy and, and Carl Unger clearly is looking down at him like this guy, you know, because he takes the laptop and he goes, you want this back? about the envelope like he i don't know it made me feel like he looks at him like such a low life where he's like oh you can have your envelope back you probably are super poor you know you need this envelope i don't know to me i thought that was very subtle but very funny uh when the when the the assistant brings jackson the files and he just with his foot just knocks him into the trash gold all oh, painful oh <laughs> no. uh the way the grandpa, uh, the Lord from uh, Game of Thrones, when yeah. the grandpa s- is talking to Cartwright and he just goes, oh, it's in the eye. And he just goes, oh, chicken's burning. The way he delivered it was very good. It was very real and natural. The acting is phenomenal in this. I think that's half of what makes it so funny. Um, anyway, and then Roddy, when he charged the private rate at, towards the end, was also funny. Those were my funny moments. Quite a few to me. Yeah, I didn't laugh at most of those because they, they, they were just kind of harsh. I mean, it's not that, <laughs> that they weren't funny, but I was just like, oh, ouch, oh, ouch. I was feeling too much for the other side. <laughs> I, God, I em- empathy think... must be crippling, Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, John. Sorry. No, um, I, I think actually my favorite scene in the whole episode was um, the fireplace scene with the grandfather and 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 River. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Phenomenally well acted, but if you watch Jonathan Price's performance, it's masterful because, you know, he, here's an old spy master who has spent his whole life keeping secrets, and he knows way more than he's telling his grandson. And, you know, the way he plays it and the way he re- reflects on River where, like, he wants – river to be as good as he is but at the same time like he he doesn't 100 percent trust his his grandson not just because he screwed up but also because you can just see like how he can only like give him so much because he's not sure about about his grandson about how about his competence or maybe his trustworthiness or whatever but you know like so it's 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 interesting because you know you can feel like he obviously loves his grandson but he's withholding so much and mm. you know it's just the depth of of the way he plays it his stone face while while he's trying to you know he and he gives his his grandson some some intel but only up to a point and he literally says that's, that's all i know but you, it, it, that is absolutely not probably never it's never all he knows <laughs> he's definitely yeah. the obi-wan mentor uh character probably going to die at some point you know if you strike me down i will become more powerful you know uh but i was really 
really interested in that too, John, about like, how is this going to progress? Every once in a while, he's going to let out a little snippet of information. Mm -hmm. He might even put his, his uh, reputation on the line, be like, oh, I really shouldn't help this kid, but okay, there's a guy named Billy and he lives at yeah. blah, blah, blah. Talk to him. You didn't hear it from me. You know, there's going to be like little things like that where he's not just mentoring, but he's also going to put his ass on the line for him, I think, a couple of times. And maybe that will will lead to his eventual demise. So I think him and I also think that Jackson Lamb will have a very interesting arc in a in a different way. I think those two are most interesting characters to me. And I think the grandfather actually already did like put his ass on the line for him. I think he was a reason. Remember, he was a reason yeah. why we got put the slow house and not thrown That's out of MI5 yeah. entirely. Yeah. yeah. And That's I think he kind of he's kind of holding that over his grandson a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, all right, everybody. It's time for something even more interesting. It's time to talk about John Orchiola of ScreenRant.com. Oh John, can you tell everybody what you cover? Well, I am the head of Star Trek at Screen Rant, and I love saying that. But um, it is, it's, a, it's a great, great gig. Um, so Screen Rant, we cover Star Trek in all of its incarnations, all the shows, all of the movies. Uh, we, we deliver uh, dozens of feature articles and news stories all week long. Um, so if you love Star Trek, Check out screenrant.com slash Star Trek and even subscribe to our newsletter there where you'll get all the biggest uh, Star Trek feature articles and news articles delivered right to your, to right to your inbox. Do you have like a, a favorite aspect of Star Trek that you like to cover? Like, are you totally into movies or are you totally into a specific show or just specifically captains or comedy? Is there anything in Star Trek hmm. that you like the best? That's a good question. Right now, I would probably say I am very, very much in love with Strange New Worlds. Um, all, all aspects of it. Um, so, you know, I selfishly kind of like, well, if something's going on with Strange New Worlds, I'll write it myself because it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of my thing. Um, but no, I mean, I, I, I love Star Trek as a whole. Um, I, what I also love is how much other people love Star Trek and figuring out how our content can deliver upon that love so that everybody, everybody who loves Star Trek has something at Screen Rant to read that, you know, will indulge their passions, whether it's Voyager, whether it's Discovery, whether it's Strange New Worlds, whether it's classic Star Trek, the movies. So uh, next gen Picard. So, you know, part of the part of my job now is coming up with content ideas to assign my writers to that, Everybody who loves Star Trek has something for them at Screen Rant that they can look forward to whenever they go on the website. John, you have you have interviews, you have straight up news, and you sometimes even do speculation. You're like, could blah 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 happen and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the last one. I'm curious, like, how do you decide what to speculate upon? That's a good question. Um, a lot of it is really just based upon like what's going on. A lot of it is also I watch Star Trek and I and I think about connections constantly um, because it's it is a is one of the best shared universes out there. Um, generations of of characters, generations of stories, and things that maybe seem innocuous that ha maybe happen in the original series all of a sudden matter on Prodigy uh, when when it when it comes up. Same with same with thing with Picard and Next Generation or Strange New Worlds and and you know look, sometimes maybe Lower Decks um, with with the crossover. So one of the things I do now is I. Or, or I've always done is when I watch a movie or a TV show, I just pay attention. I pay attention to what the characters say. I pay attention to what's going on. And I listen for or look for little tidbits that mm -hmm. connect the generations together. And then if I think it's cool, because a lot of it is just the cool factor. If I think it's cool, I want to write about it. And I, 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 will, I will assume that somebody else out there will probably think it's kind of cool, too. You know, you would have been great at writing about game of thrones because they left non-stop hints and red herrings and little connections that you have to go back and catch and then you're looking and people are saying hey did you catch this thing and you're like yeah so and they're like that's the same last name as the uncle of that one guy that died in that one and you're like whoa and then you're making these it's like a cork board with all the strings everywhere game of thrones mm -hmm. would have been nuts i bet you loved that show 
Well, Ryan, it's funny you say that because I oh. was great at writing about Game of Thrones. Oh, um, you did it. I have, I have dozens and dozens of Game of Thrones um, feature articles. Before I took over Star Trek as a whole, I used to write about everything. Star Trek was just a small component of what I used to write about at Screen Rant. I wrote about Game of Thrones. I wrote about Marvel. I wrote about DC, um, Star Wars. I wrote about – I brought – TV shows to Screen Rant specifically so I could cover them, like Cobra Kai, like oh. um, um, The Crown. I brought Down- Downton Abbey. Um, I-, I brought other shows to Screen Rant just because I wanted to write about them. So S- Star Trek is now my gig, and it p- pretty much takes up 100% of my time. But I I still find ways like to occasionally like write about AEW wrestling or or something else just to kind of because just to kind of scratch that itch. But yes, my. You know, prior to prior to, to my taking over Star Trek, I wrote about Game of Thrones. I wrote about everything. And yeah, I applied that same philosophy to whatever it is I was writing about. Perfect. Awesome. Well, John, uh, everybody can find you and your writings at uh, screenrant.com slash Star Trek and on twitter.com at back of the head. That's at back of the head. All right. Here it comes. Muhammad's got a karate chop for the backs of our heads. Bottom line. There's a Remember line in, like, the in 80s shows, they would always act like if you did a karate chop to the back of someone's head, they're like, oh, they would. Yeah, they just fall unconscious. Yeah. But yep. that was like, felt like it was strictly an 80s show thing because since then, we don't ever see that move anymore. We don't ever mm-hmm. see the sneaking around. Yeah. Mm. And, and they sometimes got start an original series, Star Trek, too, when they weren't doing the double fisted thing. Every now and then, you see somebody go, oh, and they just like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's, how, that's how the Vulcan uh, neck pinch was created. Right. Was, Nemo didn't he, want to do it. Yeah. He's like, Spock's not violent. He would have a better way to do this. Anyway. Isn't that the carotid artery there? That's what, that, that's what you chop. It cuts the blood flow. I think it's <laughs> the karate <laughs> artery. <laughs> it. <laughs> That's how I the guess. sleeper hold in pro wrestling works. When oh, you when you yeah. squeeze when you squeeze it and you're supposed to cut the blood flow to the brain, that's what knocks them out yeah. in pro wrestling. <laughs> because wrestling is very real. And anybody that says very it real. isn't doesn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so just ask Greg the Hammer Valentine. He'll tell you. All right. We're a little off I'm track, lying. but that's okay. It's the final I'm two lying. questions of the show. <laughs> Question number one is. Dr. Muhammad Noor, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give this first episode of Slow Horses? You guys were very, very close. Ryan, you said 8, and uh, John, you said between 7.5 and 8. I was, I was going to go for 7.7. 7, so like, wow. Yeah. yeah, you guys were right on it. Yep. I mean, it was good. I mean, it was a good show. It wasn't my favorite. And for me, yeah, I know you guys love Gary Oldman's character. I mean, I, I thought he added a lot, but I, oh, my God, I hated him. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, John? Yeah, I would say about 7.5. Um, a good start didn't grab me 100%. I can see the potential of what could be. I'm curious to keep going. I really want to, I actually, I really want to keep going. But um, but yeah, like not a, not 100% slam dunk, but a good, good start. I too am of the 7.5 variety wow we're all like super clustered yeah holy moly yeah. i kind of floated around on gravity that number. now because we're so clustered <laughs> i i floated around on that number a lot because first i kind of floated up in the eights but then i was like but for me it's kind of more like a 7.2 or maybe even lower you know so i'm kind of trying to like average out and figure out you know like i think this is again i think this is a slightly better show than i'm giving it credit for personally because it's not really my type of show but hey neither was succession and uh, succession is a hundred percent not my kind of show oh my <laughs> goodness i do not like those kind of shows yet it, it's uh, a phenomenal show is a phenomenal show that's it yeah. and succession that first episode blew me away this one didn't quite blow me away, but it, but there are a lot of good things to it. 7.5 from me. All right. Question number two is, for the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Slow Horses. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Dr. Muhammad Noor, would you of your own volition watch the second episode? I would. I actually was tempted to do it earlier too, but I didn't want to like mess up and actually start remembering stuff from that. So I was like, <laughs> better wait. <laughs> No, I totally would. I, I, I might. I, I, I'm not saying I will, but I might. Yeah. Well, you, John, would you? 
Yeah, um, I am the same as Muhammad. I will. I actually was going to, but I also didn't want to screw up what I remembered from the from the pilot. Um, so, but yeah, I, I'm pretty. I'm 100 percent sure I'm gonna I'm gonna continue. I mean, good company. <laughs> you know, we should have we should have like people return everybody that says I 100 percent would or I definitely come back and let us know was it as good as you hoped and dreamed and expected it to be. Um, you do that in the end of the year show sometimes. Yeah, but this is like specifically for people that actually did watch the rest you know more yeah, so but anyway as muhammad is referencing everybody um during virtual trekcon 5 in a couple weeks we will have our live show in which we go over 52 shows in 52 weeks all of the shows that we reviewed in 2023 we'll have some special guests We'll talk about whether people actually did go back and watch it again. Muhammad is going to be like, I was too harsh on this one. I was too harsh on. He's really harsh on things. Anyway, somebody said no to it. I even went and, and went on and watched it. I think I was very negative on WandaVision, but I ended up loving it. You know, just as one from last year. There are a couple of shows I did the same where I said no. Friends? And then I ended up just kind of uh, two years ago. It was the one. It was kind of a superhero show with, but they were all like brothers and sisters. They're all siblings in a big old house. And it was kind of Jupiter's legacy. No, it kind of had the feel of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. You know, it kind of had that kind oh, of feel. Oh, Umbrella Academy. Yes, Umbrella Academy. That's the one. And I was like, no, I won't. But then I just kind of curiosity kicked in one night. So I was like, all right, fine, I'll put it on. And I got through about three or four episodes in total. I was like, okay, no, I was right. <laughs> I was right. We'll start. Anyway. <laughs> <I was right. laughs> You know, about how I would feel about it, where I was like, it's not for me. And I gave it a yeah. couple more and I was like, no, it's not for me. Anyway, so the point is, this is a no for me, not a hard no. And it's this is one of those maybe that's possible that I might end up watching more possibly because it's a good show, but I'm not really interested in watching more. I'd, maybe, maybe, but probably no. Anyway, that's it for all of us. Sorry for being so noncommittal there, everybody. But uh, hey, thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, five-star rating if you're listening, and please make sure to leave a review. We really appreciate that. Make your suggestions for the month of February, which is Sci-Fi Month. Sci-Fi Month, Virtual Trek Con 5. It's going to be insane. Make your suggestions now in the comments below. What I'm trying to say is this podcast was dramatic. This podcast moved faster than a slow horse. <laughs> this podcast did not screw up as bad as River Cartwright. <laughs> Thankfully. Ain't that the <laughs> truth? Uh, <laughs> all right, everybody. Remember what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg likes to say. Don't forget to be an organ donor. And don't forget to watch the first of things. All right, everybody. Freeze frame like Jackson Lamb on a good day. I don't even know what that means. So I sit around for a while and force that shitty smile.